My tips for pricing your home. Get at least three agents to value your property. Use the Zoopla estimate tool to give you a very rough idea, although sometimes wildly inaccurate, when done right, they consider how many properties in your local area have been sold, if they can identify the exact location, the number of similar homes in the area, and the state of the housing market as a whole. Do not believe these common misconceptions. Price your home much higher to make more money. If you think your home is worth more, ignore what others have sold for near you. The internet says your house, your house is worth a certain amount, so that's the price you can list it for. Include the cost of all updates you've made in your home's list price, pound for pound. Price reductions always give you and your home a bad reputation. If you accept the first offer that comes your way, you priced it wrong. And finally, take your time. There's no harm in waiting for a while for the right offer. All wrong. Keep in mind these valid following points. Seasonality. In the majority of the country, spring is considered the best time to sell a home. The weather is improving and families want to move during the summer holidays. Autumn is considered second best as most people are home from their holidays. Winter is a slow period typically, not only because of bad weather, but people are busy with their families. Inventory. In business and economics, we were taught the basics of supply and demand. It definitely applies to the housing market. If your home is one of 10 for sale in your town, you have a hard time getting the exact figure you want since supply outweighs demand. But if it's a solid market and you're one of a few properties available in your area, you may be able to get what you want, if not more. In a buyer's market, it's best to be priced slightly lower than the competition, as there are more properties for sale than buyers in the market. In a seller's market, you could go about 10% above a comparable home, since inventory is limited and buyers are competing for less properties. In a neutral market, there tends to be a good balance between the number of buyers and the number of properties available. In this instance, you'll want to keep an eye on the homes around you to make sure your pricing is close. It's best to put your mindset the same as what the buyers will be. How would you react? I know it's difficult to set aside your emotional attachment to your beautiful home where you may have raised a family and have many memories, but when selling your home, it's important to do so. Look about at what else is selling around for a similar price. Be honest. Are these homes worth more or less than yours? Price for what buyer's ranges may be online. Consider what price range your property will fall into on popular portals. Most buyers have a range they're considering. A buyer looking at homes in the 700,000 to a million pound range will likely not see your house if it's listed at slightly above a million. But if you choose a home listing price of 999,000, it will show up in their range and they might just end up being the one who takes your home. Learn from other sellers' mistakes. Review properties that have expired from your area to gain some knowledge on pricing your home to sell. Look at original list prices of recently sold homes with their final sale price. Did it take a few drops to get a sale? Maybe it was overpriced to begin with. If you do search for properties that could compare to yours, try and be within half a mile of your home. See what has been available over the last few months. Try and match a similar age to your home. Have square footage within 10% of yours. So if your home is 3,500 square feet, you should look at homes between 3,150 and 3,850 square feet. Remember these final three things when pricing your home to sell based on homes around you. Attempt to remain within the price range of comparable homes near you. Only add in the cost of upgrades if they add value to your home.